treat instead, uh, or a cup of tea. And make the, make the time frame very clear. So if you are a person, well, most people with chronic illness have this issue, but if you are a person with low energy, then you're going to want to make the time frame clear and explain. You don't, well, actually, you don't need to explain yourself. You can just say, hi, you can pick me up at X, um, like whatever time works for you, and just say, I need to be home by 10 o'clock, or I need to be home by 9 o'clock. And just make, make it clear so that you get you both have fun and you're also not going to run yourself ragged over one day. Okay? Still with me? Feel free to com comment. Feel free to send me questions. Guys, this is so fun for me. I love doing this. Okay. And then the last thing on dating. Take care of yourself. So, again, I want to say dating should be Fun. That dating is not meant to run you ragged or take away all of your energy expenditures for the day or the week. It should be fun. So make sure that while you are, when you're single and, and dating, make sure that you're taking care of yourself too. Now, because dating can take a toll on your body. I mean, that is its energy to to meet a new person and have a conversation for me right now, you know, after quarantine, you know, social engagements take a little bit more energy and brain power. So just keep that in mind so that you can either rest before and rest after. Just make sure that you're taking care of your body because dating can take a toll on your body, whether whatever activity you're doing, um, it, it can expend a lot of energy. So have date nights and rest nights with yourself. Don't forget to date yourself. You know, have a movie night at home with yourself and fix your favorite snack or favorite dinner and have rest nights that are luxurious where you can take care of your skin um, and have a nice bubble bath or read your favorite book. Just make sure that you continue having date nights with yourself so that you are, are resting and you're feeling rest restored in between going on dates. Um, yeah, I mentioned favorite foods, um, watching your favorite movie, listening to your favorite music and dancing around, or if that's too much energy, then do something more low key, a, a favorite activity that's lower key. Just make sure that you rest when it's needed and prioritize your health. Because if you can, if, if your health, like, you just want to make sure that you, your health comes first when you're going out on dates. And again, make it fun. Make sure that dating, you're having fun when you're dating. Okay, I'm going to take a sip of water. My nose keeps itching, guys. Please forgive me. <laughs> We're moving on to marriage. If anyone has any questions it, please, about dating, going on dates with a chronic illness, feel free to put them in the comments. Also, when it comes to dating, there is a new program I'm going to announce soon where we talk all about the strategies of dating with a chronic illness, what it takes, how you can do it, how you can make it fun and um, perfect for you. So, so just know that that's coming. Okay, marriage. Okay. So I'm going to lump marriage and committed relationships in one because, you know, marriage is a committed relationship. So whether you have a long-term partner, marriage, whatever, this is related. This is, um, this is for you. So I mentioned that I met my husband. Oh, yes. Thank you, Carissa. Is it okay to share as you go along in a relationship? Absolutely. So I think it's important to disclose it in the beginning as you guys become exclusive. Um, so just so that your partner knows what's going on at a very high level. Um, and then you, you can share on an as needed basis, as needed or as you desire. So if you don't want to share the like the 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 deep symptoms of 
or every single symptom of your illness that I think that's okay. But as those come up, I think it's important to start communicating that. And um, especially if it affects, if you notice that it starts affecting your relationship or your day to day, it, I think it's important to share then, um, especially if it's something like fatigue, where it affects how much you can accomplish or get done that day or, you know, whatever, whatever's going on. Um, or, you know, it's symptoms that affect your day to day. Yeah. Okay. Marriage and committed relationships. So I mentioned at the beginning that I, that my now husband is the person, <laughs> the first and only guy that I dated that I just completely disclosed to like word vomited of everything. <laughs> and guess what? He's still here. <laughs> so I am married and I have been married for three and a half years. So I would not say that I am a marriage expert, but I would like to say that I have learned so much about what it takes to be married specifically with a chronic illness. So that's how I'm going to communicate this moving forward. Okay. So communication. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you get nothing else out of this, it is communication is the key to a healthy and happy marriage, just in general, but especially if one of you has a chronic illness or a chronic health condition. Why? Because our partners aren't mind readers. They're just not. Guys, I wish that they were. I wish that, well, maybe not, <laughs> but in some cases I wish that they were mind readers. So, but they're not. So communication needs to be top priority. That's, well, not just for marriage, but for any committed relationship, it's top priority. So I recommend keeping an open and clear channel of communication with your partner, especially about your health and how it affects your day-to-day -day and your relationship. So how do you do this? Check in with yourself first to find out how, how do you feel? So you can't communicate this with someone else if you yourself don't know how you feel. <laughs> so, and with chronic illness, this can, this can change on a, like on a dime. For me, it can change on a dime every hour um, or every day, a week. These things change quickly. So check in with yourself. I recommend every morning, or if you feel yourself shifting or fading and getting more fatigued, check in with yourself again multiple times a day and see how you feel and then, excuse me, what you need help with. And then identify, identify what you need to do each day, each week, each month. What are your to-dos? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, what are your, like on your own personal level, what are you trying to accomplish on your own? So then communicate regularly. So then communicate with your partner regularly on how you feel and how they can best support you. So first check in with yourself, check in with what you have going on that day, week or month, and then communicate with your partner on how they can help, how you're feeling and what you need help with what you can accomplish and what that you need help with. Okay. Managing expectations. This is another really important topic for marriage and committed relationships with chronic illness. Again, our partners aren't mind readers and we aren't either. So the only expectations that should be in place are the ones that have been communicated and agreed upon by both partners. Anything else are unwritten, our silent expectations of the other one is where dissatisfaction and unnecessary tension come from. So if we put expectations and we assume that they're going to take out the trash when it hasn't been clearly communicated that that is their role in the relationship is to take out the trash. So then, you know, you'll end up getting frustrated and cause tension in the relationship when it wasn't actually communicated in the beginning that you needed help taking out the trash. Now, that is just, that is a very basic example. There are tons of other ones, but 
That's the one that came to mind. So clearly communicate with your partner what you are able to do. And that could be in that moment, again, like that day, that week, that season of life, what you're able to do and also communicate what you can't do, what you need help with. So maybe it's not forever that you're not able to cook. Maybe that's just one thing that you have to pass off for a season of time until you start to feel better. I know that my husband, when he is able to, during the pandemic, I was really sick and he was, he was at home. Um, so he was able to cook every night. So that was just what he, what, how he was able to support me was by cooking. Um, he enjoys cooking. It's not a task for him. Whereas for me, by the end of the day, I have no energy left and that's just not something that I enjoy and it ends up taking up way more energy than I have. So that is just something that we were able to communicate and understand that that was going to be his role for that time period. You know, now that I'm feeling better, things have shifted and I'm beginning to cook more because I have more energy. So as you start to feel better, as your health changes, make sure that those expectations change as well, that you communicate, hey, you know what? I'm actually feeling better. I, I think I might cook this week. Communicate that. And I think that will ease a lot of the tension and a lot of the frustrations around where your partner can and, can and can't support you because maybe it hasn't been communicated. Hey, okay, also, similar to dating, practice self-love. Make sure that you are making time for yourself every day, if not every day, every week. Because when your cup is full, it will overflow to others, including your partner. Make time each week to recharge and to refresh your mind, your body, and your soul. Do what brings you joy. I know this is a lot harder with kids. I am speaking <laughs> from the perspective of someone without kids. So I know this can be challenging, but find, even if it's just five minutes to just sit in your bedroom by yourself and meditate or just sit and journal for five minutes or read a book that you enjoy, just find that time for yourself to recharge as often as you can. So ideally on a daily basis, if not, maybe take a, like, a, a couple hours over the weekend to sit and enjoy your coffee and read a book. It can be that simple. Whatever it is that, that refuels you and makes you feel alive and makes you feel like you are recharging <laughs> your batteries and your mind and your soul, make sure to do that as much as possible. Again, this looks different for everyone. Maybe you're not a coffee and journal kind of girl or, or guy. Maybe you don't enjoy reading. Do whatever it is that brings you joy. For my husband, it's golfing. So he makes time to golf on his own at least once a week because that's what refuels